you're tuned in to the message talk show the message talk show broadcasting all the way from london england good morning good afternoon and good evening wherever you're tuning in from tell us where you're tuning in from tell us where you're tuning in from just post in the comments box where you're tuning in from around the world we'll acknowledge you we'll pick you up yeah we'll pick you up so just tell us where you're tuning in from around the world so the message talk show what we do on the message talk show we look for passionate we look for mission centered we look for individuals who are passionate about what they do and help them get their message out there what that helps them to do is to find the power in their voice in their message based upon the principles by which they're pushing their business by which they're pushing their entrepreneurship by which they're pushing pushing their ministry whatever it is however they're doing it we help them to get their voice out there so today we have a very special guest in-house today, someone who is working in what we call a woman, sorry, let me say that again. She is a woman empowerment expert, a life coach. She ministers with her business and she helps women find their true authentic self. She helps women find their true authentic self. She helps women to overcome the challenges that they face in their relationships, wherever they are, wherever they're stuck. She helps them. She is the woman to speak to. She's the person to speak to. So let me introduce you to a lady by the name of Kim Backus. Let me bring her into the studio and say, welcome to the Message Talk Show, Kim. Hello there. Thank you so much for having me. I've been so looking forward to this show. Yay! You've been excited about coming on the show, Kim. That's good. That's wonderful. See, when, when you get excited, I get excited as well. You Yay. know? Yay. So, so that, that, that's great to have you on today. Thank you. And how are you feeling today? How, I'm how feeling, are you today? I, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling pumped up. I'm ready to rock and roll now. Yeah, yeah I'm feeling good. You're ready yeah. to rock and roll. To ready yeah, to rock. Yeah. That, that's good. Kim, what's your movement, Kim? <laughs> Well, I'm hoping it would become a movement, really. It's about empowering women. It's about making women understand who they really are, their true, authentic self. It's not putting up with, um, it's understanding where, as well, first of all, it's education, first of all. It's about educating yourself about um, about um, matters of life on social issues, about what, what affects women. Understanding yourself as a true person as well and what you will put up with and what you won't put up with. And most women put up with crap because they, they don't know who they are. They don't love themselves. They don't value themselves. It's about knowing your true worth. So, um, and I just think that there's such a need for that. And I just, I, I, if, if all women, if we can all come together and just become, we'll be so powerful and a force to be reckoned with. And, um, you know, it, it, it just, it's just an amazing thing. I mean, I'm living proof of that. I'm just living proof of that. Definitely. Okay. Wow. So just before Kim goes into the story and gives us a bit of background, let me just jump into um, our host, our sponsor, with a word from our sponsor. Kim Backus Solutions. That's what your company is called. That's what you do. What's the story behind you, Kim? What got you talking about Kim Backus Solutions or creating Kim Backus Solutions? Okay. Well, um, I, I start from the beginning. Okay. I, yes. As you well put it, I am a women's empowerment life coach and a facilitator and I'm a trainer and an author as well. Can I do a plug? Can I do a quick plug? I'm going to be cheeky. Yes, yes, That's my yes, book. you can do a plug. You guys can see it. <laughs> Stop hurting me, time to get out. Okay, that's on Amazon. Okay. And, um, you know, and I train women to become confident, to understand who they are, to move forward into their destiny. Um, like I always say with any of my interviews, I'm not a psychiatrist and I'm not a social worker, nor am I a lawyer. And I'm not here to tell um, anybody what to do. Okay, I'm just here. With, I'm just a one woman with a mission and, 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 and a story to tell and to help other other people. And for many years, you know, I had a huge secret and it was the man that I loved more than anyone else on, the, on this planet, basically. Um, he held a knife at my throat and he threatened to kill me more times than I can ever, ever remember. Um, for every verbal abuse, for every physical abuse, for uh, my abuser would always say that he didn't mean it and, and that I brought this anger out in him and made him do it. And, and why did he do it? 
wait for it, these famous words, he said, because he loved me. And this is such a trap disguised as love, because I truly believed he loved me. I truly believe that he, he, he meant, he didn't mean to hurt me. He didn't mean to batter me. Um, but he did it because either I aggravated him or this man truly loved me. And it's so funny how that, how we, th there's a misconception that how, that, that this, these kind of stories can be disguised as love for many people. And I think what happened for me was that when I got out of the relationship, well, as I said, you can go to get my book and find the rest of my story. But <laughs> as I, uh, when I, when I left that relationship, um, I, um, I was in a really, really dark place. Um, I'd lost myself. I didn't know who I was. I had no identity. I certainly didn't look like how I did today, do today, and um, I was a mess. And um, I basically, I had, I have a, so I had a son. Um, um, I had a, a small little boy at the time, and um, it was for me. You know, did I, did I want him? My, my son was my motivation. And, you know, every time I looked at him, I would look at him as he'd be looking back at me. And I was just thinking, what is he seeing? Uh, and did I want him to see this? And I went, I embarked on a, on a real sort of like self-personal development journey um, that took many years. And it was something that I found quite interesting because I found myself changing. I found myself liking me. I found myself, I mean, it was a point I couldn't even look in the mirror because I was always told how ugly and disgusting I was and I believed it. But, but this self-development journey changed my life. It, it started to change who I, how, how I perceived and looked at myself. I became more confident. I, I achieved things. I started to do things in my life that was just like totally amazing. Like, I mean, I've, I've got my own company now. Uh, I'm an author of four books, okay? This is just one I've just shown you there. Um, I'm a motivational speaker, I'm a licensed trainer, I'm a facilitator. I'm also an ordained minister. My faith really helped me a lot. And, and I spent most of my top working career working for corporate companies in the UK. So I've come a long way. So Kim Backer Solution was formed really to say that if I can do it, I would love to show other women how I did it. And I'm living testimony of it. This is not just textbook I'm giving you. This is true life experience. And um, so, you know, what I, so, so my first golden nugget to anyone that's listening to right now is that don't judge a book by its cover, okay? Domestic abuse can happen to anyone, okay? Anybody, okay? Whether, so whether go, you're whatever, let's, race, let's, religion, levels, whatever. Let's go back a bit. Let's go back a bit then. Let's go back a bit to, to um, when, when you were going through what you were going through, you mentioned that... Um, the, the gentleman held a life a knife to your neck. When you were going through what you were going through, wasn't there anyone out there that could help? Where could help? No, like most abusive victims, you're very isolated. They're very good at um, uh, perpetrators. Um, they they have such a tactic. They they can come across quite charming. Everybody loves them. Behind closed doors, it's a different matter. Um, you you almost. Well, for me, he isolated, slowly but surely, I was being isolated from family and friends. So it's just he and I in, 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 in the house. So he was able to manipul manipulate me, abuse me, um, physically um, assault me and, and hurt me in many ways more than once. So it, he, it was perfect opportunity for him. I had nobody I could turn to. Another reason why I don't think I would have wanted to turn to anyone, I felt incredibly ashamed. I felt so embarrassed. I felt like, how could I go out there and say that this is what he's doing? Because you've got to remember as well, everyone liked him as well. And nobody would have ever, I think there would have been doubt if even if I'd said he was abusing me because he was such a charming person. Everyone thought he was amazing. And I just thought, what they don't know won't harm them. And another reason why I think I was scared, because, he, you know, the threats of, if you tell anybody, I'm going to go and hurt them too. And that was a, not an option for me. So I just kept quiet. I didn't say anything. I just put up with it. Wow. So the stats say that every 30 seconds, there's a, 
a, um, an abusive offence, domestic abuse offence, to report to the police. At any point in your time, did you report what was happening to the police? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I did report it to the police and um, they said it was a domestic issue and was I in pain, was I hurting or was I uh, physically abused? I said, yes, I was. And um, it, they said they took a report, but nothing wasn't done. Um, nothing wasn't done at the time. Um, so but you, you're you weren't talking, signposted? You're, no, wasn't signposted, didn't know what to do. To tell you the truth, I didn't, I, to be honest with you, I did not know there was such a thing called domestic violence. I did not know I was in an abusive relationship. This became so normal to me that um, I, I had no idea. And do you know how I knew and how I found out? It was, this is what I'm saying, education is so key because in 10 minutes, a light bulb came on for me, okay? And it was at home, I put the TV on and Oprah Winfrey was on TV talk, doing a show on domestic violence. And wow. I was looking at these women talking about their stories. I remember thinking, oh, poor, poor women, do you know what I mean? And all this stuff. And then when you st I started to hear their stories and, and suddenly it dawned on me that their stories were very similar to mine. And I was glued to this screen now. And I'm just thinking, no, this can't be. Why is she talking my story? And then at the end of it, this lady who's actually was in a, an abusive relationship for many years, but she got out, said, listen, folks, um, you know, it's not it's not love. This is called domestic abuse. And she said, if you, if you feel that any of these ladies have said anything that's very similar to your lifestyle and your story, you could be possibly a domestic violent victim. For that's the first time I think I sat there with my mouth open and I realized like I had a label on me that said victim. And um, I think that was the turning point for me. I think that's when I realized that I was in something that was not called love. The whole, that whole love illusion just disappeared when I watched that show because of that 10 minutes of hearing what abuse was, what the signs are, what it can do to you. All of these things just made that light bulb come on to me. That's, that simple information came on for me and, and sort of changed the outlook about how I was going to carry on. With, and okay. I started to plan my life, what I'm going to do. So before I ask you that key question, you may be joining us from wherever you are today. This is the Message Talk Show with host Alex Gordon and empowerment expert Kim Backus. Today we're talking about is it love or is it abuse? And Kim Backus is sharing her story with us, sharing why she set up Kim Backus Solutions and why and, and, and the catalyst for how she's now conducted her life and transformed her life from where she was with all the pain, being a victim, now to being a victor, traveling, speaking, ministering across the world, helping women find their true self. So let me just see a few comments coming up before I ask you the question, Kim. Yes. Right, so, um, yep, Zona Bell says, know your true worth. I like that, Kim. She said, absolutely. Policies and procedures. Okay, let me put that on the stage. Policies and procedures need to change through the government. So, what points? What points do we want change as the people of the UK? That's key. That's key. And then we have. Oh, D said, well done for getting out and finding your true self. That's amazing. Finding your true self. So, so let me ask you, Kim. What is abuse? Well, abuse encompasses encompasses. Um, different areas of um well let me break it down i could i was going to go to go through all of the different um things but the government guidelines for domestic abuse is domestic abuse is defined as an incident okay or a pattern of controlling or coercive behavior it's about degrading someone it's about being violent and and showing violent behavior and it, it, it can include sexual violence, um, usually by a partner or an ex-partner. But what it really boils down to is about power and control. That's the bottom line. It's about power and control. It's about power and control. So having, wow, that's, that's, that, that is, what are the signs? Well, the signs of an abusive relationship, well, First of all, there's there's what some there's, there's different segments of there's different um, orders of um, 
um, domestic abuse. There's one called emotional abuse and physical abuse, um, psychological abuse. Um, it, it, it could be mean like, um, well, physical is, is it, it's, like, it's actually like what the name calls it. It's like, it's, it's yelling, threatening, humiliating, shaming, shaming you, amongst other tactics as well. Physical abuse is, is slapping, punching, pulling your hair, kicking. There's financial abuse. These are the things that people don't know. People just associate um, domestic abuse with just getting a good old beating. But there's so much more that's involved in it as well. There's financial abuse. This is a type of abuse that that when you, when your partner um, um, actions like cutting off any financial um, um, money towards you, for you, like cutting off your bank account, access to bank account, no access to your bank account, controlling where you can work and, and controlling your, your income coming in as well. You've got sexual abuse as well. This is formed as, um, it's a sexual assault or in other words, it's, it's like rape. And what people don't understand is, is that they say, well, Kim, I'm married to him and he's forced me to have sex. Am I supposed to not do it? And I'm just saying, well, no, if you say, no, listen, listen, let me just make it clear. Okay. No, is no okay i don't care how intimate you get to a point right when you say you say no it means no anything outside that no is what we would define as and the government and the law would define it as rape because it's not with your consent okay so just know that okay um there's verbal abuse which is just as bad as physical abuse because i mean it, i mean that can wear you down i mean it will me down being constantly told horrible things about yourselves and um and, and being put down being name called it, it, it's just a really nasty um a way to erode at your self-confidence and your self-esteem then there's something called spiritual abuse which people go what and you know this is a type of abuse that includes attacking another person's belief system okay denying access to probably the um, a, a house of worship or or maybe being forced to participate in some sort of cult as well so those are sort of like just a few of what abuse is okay so um and it's really fun because when i do my training and and i get lots of emails and people say well i i would never have guessed that i would have never known that and so people are living with this for years and not known they're actually living in an abusive relationship so the journey that got you thinking moving acting developing yourself to to, to free yourself what was that journey that you went on from there to do you said you did a lot of personal development yep to yep. build your confidence what was the journey the journey well well the first of all my journey i remember my journey started in the library because that was my space of place of escape was the library i remember that like it was yesterday I used to go and sit in the library and I used to sit within a section called the personal development section. It's only, and, and, and it's only by fate I happened to be sat there and I would read books just to kill time because I mm. knew what time he would leave the house so I can get go back when he wasn't around. And, and then um, I then joined another, uh, where well, you talk about movement, a personal development movement with um, Wayne Malcolm who is a profound trainer in personal development and a phenomenal coach. They call him the business coach as well. And um, I joined his courses probably, um, I, I started training with him probably over 10 years ago. And his training, and that man actually changed my life, my whole perception about who I was. I, I actually remember I, I was working at the time and I thought this job I was in would be the best job for, for the rest of my life. This is where I'm going to be for the rest of my life. I don't know if any of you have ever felt that. And when I did that course on the Saturday, I remember crying. I remember walking away. I remember making a list of saying, well, I'm going to be writing. I'm going to write books, hence more four books I've written. And I remember leaving, going back into work on the Monday morning, <laughs> sitting at my desk thinking, I don't want to be here anymore. This is not who I am. There's so much more to me. And that's when I realized that how we are blinded 
by our true talent and our worth and our destiny that's within us. And until somebody actually draws it out of you, you never know how much you can contribute in this world, how much you can change people's lives, how much you can save people's lives as well. So, you know, for me, that was the beginning of my journey with wow. that particular person, definitely. But you said, you said that we're blind from our true self by the routines that we, 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 we conduct every day. Why do you think that we, we get blinded so much in a routine and a job and we can't see that we're bigger than we're, we're, what we're doing? Why, why do you think that is? Well, first of all, well, like what I just said as well, because I, it was through of education that drew that out of me. Mm. And, 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 and seeking to do a self, to self help yourself to become a better person as well. Another reason why is that you could be just settling. You just settle. You just think, well, this is it. It's paying my wages. It's paying my mortgage. It's doing everything. It's, it's just perfect. It's, it is what it is. I, it's just un it's so funny you should say it because only yesterday I was speaking to somebody that said that he hates his job. Oh. And when I asked him, why don't you do something about it? And why don't, you know, it was a bit, we did a bit of a coaching as well. And it's like, where, you know, what, what is your passion? Where, where, what do you really want to do? And another thing is fear. It's fear of moving on because fear of the of uncertainty. On. Yeah. And not know whether you're going to be making money. Is it going to work? But people don't say you can actually do something part time. You could do this in the evenings. You could do this during the weekends. It is something you can do it as a trial run just to see how you go. And it's something that could. That, but that's how I started that. I mean, I didn't leave the corporate world just like that. I I actually started to produce my business on the side, and then when it took off. Then I decided, well, yeah, I'm ready to go now. I'm ready to start and, and leave this rat race behind. And that's how I did it. So you made a decision then. You made a decision in so many areas of your life, in your life all Absolutely. at the same time. It's about you... choices. It's about decisions that you make in your life. Absolutely. Yeah. And at the time when you made those decisions, could that, could that decision have come earlier in your life? Or was it, would you say it came at the right time? You know, what would you say? Yeah, no, it came at the right time. I, I'm a, you know, I, I, I don't, it was horrible what happened to me. It was, in fact, mm. it was, it was, it was traumatic. It was, it was horrid. Um, my life over a number of years took a turn that was, that, that I, I, I wouldn't have been here. I mean, there was points I, I, I even contemplating suicide. It was that low for me, but. I tell you something, and I think it's about having, it's about being positive within as well as outside as well. For me, I, I do believe it's what's made me who I am today. Um, wow. I think I'm a stronger woman for it. I think I'm much more wiser. And um, it, 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 what's happened, my training and my whole change of my life happened when it should have happened. And um, it, wow. what would have been sad would have been what would have been really sad is if that I've taken all that bad experience and did nothing with it. Yeah, and just and just, it, yeah. and just sat on it and just trod, plodded on with my everyday life, being a victim and just being sad and, and poor me, poor me, poor me. That's what would have been terrible. But I didn't wow. do it. I turned it around. And why I'm so, I'm so passionate about this is because if I wow. can do this. Anyone can do this, and, and and my life was hell, hell with a capital H, yeah. hell. Okay. <laughs> hey, just be, just before Kim tells us about how she helps women now, let's let's um let's go to some of the comments. But before we go to the comments, if you're joining us for the first time, this is the Message Talk Show. We help passionate people, and Kim is passionate. We help passionate people get their message across, use their voice their mission-centered principles to get their message out to the world to make an impact to the world and let's face it if you're not opening your mouth and talking to the rest of the world if you're not doing what you're meant to do if you're not finding your true self as what kim says finding that true self-worth not settling for where you are thinking you can do more than what you can do you're more than what you are right now. If you don't get to that point, then wow, you're not living the way you should live. And Kim is telling us that. So before Kim tells us about how she helps women now, let's go to some of the comments.
All right, here's, this is a big one. Victims in position of domestic abuse violence do not realize it. It's not acceptable to live with abuse within a relationship. The abusive lifestyle becomes a norm for someone which is mm -hmm. not society, relational, healthy, within a relationship. It's awful. A person feels worthless and confused in an abusive relationship. Wow, that's a deep one there. Mm -hmm. And then we have Mr. Or Carol Townsend, brilliant. But what if you do not hate your job but love it? <laughs> <laughs> what if you do not hate your job but you love where you are? You love the, you love the function or you love the environment? Which is it? Do you know what I always say to people when they say that? I say it's when when you get to that point, it's time to start upskilling yourself. Right. Start upskilling yourself. You, there's no one says you have to leave your environment, but look to see what other jobs in the environment that you could be trained to do, that you can upskill yourself and actually stay where you are. But it's about, prom if, don't wait for people to promote you, promote yourself. Yes, yes, yes. that's true. It's about progression, isn't it? You, you should Absolutely. be progressing. From year to year, you should have goals that you're achieving and you pushing yourself. You should have yourself. goals, exactly. And not settling. That's right. Because you can't you can't confuse settling with loving your job, can you? No. Oh, you shouldn't? You shouldn't. Okay, Kim. That's amazing. Okay, Kim. So now tell us, Kim, how do you help women now with all the, with the solutions that you've packaged and you bring out? How do you help women now? Mm -hmm. Well, I am a qualified coach. I'm an NLP master's practitioner and coaching um, um, and facilitator and training person. So what I would, I took all my skill sets, okay, and I wrote training programs in regards to how to help women. Because it's, it's okay talking about it, but how do you actually do it? So what I did is, like I said, I'm not a textbook person. I take from my own experience and I put it in a format that I can teach. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, well, the first hurdle I remember I had to go through was actually building my confidence and self-esteem. So I do confidence and self-esteem courses and, and, and showing women how to, to attain that and how to keep it and how, how powerful that can actually make a woman as well. And um, obviously you mentioned about goal setting that's so key for me because goal setting for me was it's where it's got me to where I, I mean I didn't jump from domestic abuse to where I am right now it has mm. been a progressive journey and that has been done by setting small goals little steps that I've taken along the way that's taken me to where I am today. And I've got a goal for another five years and I've got goals for another 10 years. It continues. I can't st stress how important goal setting is for your life because it will, it's, 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 it's what took me forward instead of keeping me stagnant in, in where I would have probably ended up being if I didn't do this. So goal setting as well. Um, I talk about there's another program I do called Me, Myself and I. It's about really learning to look at yourself in the mirror because one of the things that I could not do was look in the mirror. And um, I'm, I'm even getting emotional about it because I remember even just thinking, just even looking in the mirror was just like terrible for me. It was just, it was like, everything he said about me, I looked in the mirror and I saw like bubbles coming up. It was like, you're ugly, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. You're this, you're that. And um, it took me a lot, it was hard work and a lot of determination to get to that point to say me, myself and I, but this was about me and myself in that mirror. And for me to actually start to love myself um, and, and not in a vain way, but love yourself in a, in a sense of respecting yourself, about knowing your self-worth about understanding who you are because when you're in an abusive relationship you become a different person you've become molded into something that person wanted you to be you've lost your identity i had to find all of that again so i, I do this me myself and i training course to help women find themselves and um, but like as you can hear from my voice anything that i'm doing i'm only doing I'm, it's coming from inside of me it is it is my roots it is who i am today and that's what i bring out in my training so like i said i'm not a textbook person um you know i i didn't i didn't go you know i obviously i studied for what i had to do right now but this is just something that's coming from my heart it's a heartbeat for me 
Well, it has to it has to be a heartbeat um, from where you're coming from, the journey that you've taken, the self development journey, and now to bring these solutions to women. Now, I'm imagining that every time you deliver a course, every time you you go out there and you're speaking to women, that you're almost living again what what happened. Am I right? Well, I don't. I don't structure my training that way. I, 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 tr I don't believe in regression. I don't believe in going back and, and rehashing what's happened. That's not my aim. Right. My aim is about going, moving forward, okay? It's about rebuilding you. It's like, you know, it's like, it's, it's helping you get to a place of understanding from there to there now. That's where, that's, the bricks. that's my okay. goal. Yeah. So it's like, a, it's the bricks. You find the bricks and you start yeah. building with the bricks. That's right. Brick step by, by brick. step. That's right. And step by step. Absolutely. And finding Absolutely. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how often do you run these courses? How often do you run these courses? I run these courses um, every once a month. I run these courses. Um, so they're, um, I'm just actually re re doing one of the pages on my website right now because obviously with COVID-19, like these my courses used to be face to face, but now everything has to go on Zoom now, webinar. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's cool. I love it. And, um, but so, um, but the courses are on a regular basis and I normally put out a lot of stuff I do on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. I mean, I, mean, I can see my stuff, all, my um, information going across the screen and you can go to my website and you can find out all the courses that I've got going on as well. And when's the next course? I think you've got something coming up shortly. I've got a domestic, um, I've got um, that's not love, it's domestic abuse training this evening. I do it every Thursday at 7 p.m. And this is a free training. And um, I, it's like I set myself a challenge here. I said, um, I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it until that information gets out there. I don't know how long I'm going to keep doing it, but I'm going to keep doing it. I don't even care if I've got one person, two people, three people. I don't care. But I mean, I don't actually have, I have quite a lot of people come on. But if it ever got to that point, I don't care. I'm still going to keep doing it because I think it's so key, so key to be educating, to understand what domestic abuse is and what are the signs? What do you do? How, what, what you know, if these things are light bulb moments and, you know, I, I know when I do my training, the beauty of it, I mean, the, the email, the comments, the chat in the chat box is people coming back and saying, first of all, I never knew that was abuse. And, um, you know, that is the light bulb moment. And yes, I'm going to run now. I'm not staying there because I know now that that's wrong. That's not love. That's abuse. So that to me is that just the icing on the cake for me when I do that at seven o'clock. I love it. I love doing that. I love it. Wow. Let me ask this, this final question. You, 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 you inferred this, um, earlier and I, I didn't really jump on it you, you how, how much of your faith was it was able to help you to, to get through this how much of how much of your solution your breakthrough how much of that was um come from your faith 100 percent, 100 percent. when i was being abused it was the most loneliest journey of my life and when you don't have anyone around you just knowing that you've got this supernatural strength from something that you believe in, and um, well, you know, I, I, you know, I believe in Jesus. I, 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 you know, I, 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 I have a real great relationship with Jesus Christ, and I truly believe it's my faith. And the times when I felt that I had when I was stuck in my room after having such a great beating or being released from the hospital after having my nose broken, but several times my nose has been broken, my eye socket has been fractured. Um, I, 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 you know, having my word to read, to give me comfort in times of need, because there was no, what, no human being could have made me feel comforted like my faith did. And, you know, and I've spoken to so many women and men of faith that not necessarily Christian, they could have been Jewish, they could have been Muslim, um, different faith, faith organizations that have said that their faith has really carried them through. So, you know, and I truly believe that, you know, whatever you believe in, um, you know, hold on to it because that is the anchor that takes you through the storm. And that's what took me through the storm. Only to God. Yeah. Wow, we have a we have you've got a fan here. This them Zona Bell has said again, came back as personal experience speaks louder than theoretical uh, points, facts. Personal experience carries a great weight of power and empowerment to set people free. And Amazing. We've seen that with yourself. You, you, your personal experience 
put together and packaged now with the education with the step-by-step -step approach to help people navigate their way through and signpost themselves for a better life to find their true authentic self. Yes. Now, let me let me ask you the final question. And I, I've been saying this for a while Are now. You sure? you know, Are you sure sure this is the final one? <laughs> let me ask you the final question. Now, what would be your ideal? What, what's your ideal circumstance? From everything you're doing, what do you see what happened across, say, Great Britain, across your community? What would you like to see happen? In regards to domestic abuse? Yeah, in, in regards to what you're doing. I mean, you're bringing this, you're bringing this solution to the world, you're bringing this to your community. What would you like to see happen? Well, for me personally, for my goals, I would like to see more institutions set up for, um, for Black, Asian and ethnic minority groups. Um, I would like to see more training and more help available to, to that minority of groups of people. Um, I want to see um, this subject being spoken about more widely and, um, and actually taken more seriously. I mean, granted, COVID-19 was terrible, but what it, it, the, the blessing it brought was that it highlighted domestic abuse. And albeit, I must stress that COVID-19 did not cause domestic abuse. It's been happening for hundreds of years. But what it did, it just highlighted it even more, which was a blessing in disguise because it really needed that sh that light to be shone on it. I think for me, Kim Backer's solution is about being a light in a dark place and shining a uh -huh. light on this subject so that um, people could be ultimately just to be set free mm. i've experienced freedom and i can't tell you wow. what that's like and until you know where i'm coming from or why i, or why I'm, I think just know mm. know what you're doing know, know be educated on domestic abuse understand it and it's simple it's actually it's not rocket science okay my training mm. takes about 45 minutes when i'm done people are like wow because mm. it's not rocket science it takes it, it it just it just about it's just simple points that could put that light bulb comes on and then saves your life you're free be free hey. be free people that's what it's about just be free do, do it, we, you know what you know we talk about people putting us in bondage we are worse enemies we can keep ourselves in bondage that's why I, I can't stress enough knowledge is key guys knowledge is key well done Kim You've, you've gone through amazing hurdles. You've escaped from a cave that captured you and kept isolated. You are flying in love and for others to set them free to become their self, themselves. Awesome, amazing. Yes, that's oh, amazing. Thank Kim. you so much. That's thank amazing. You. The that, comments that was from amazing. Yeah, oh the God. comments are amazing. The that's comments lovely. are amazing. So, so I want you guys to please support Kim. Here's her email, here's an email address, her Facebook page, her Twitter, and her Instagram. And if you go along and just support what Kim is doing and become ambassadors for change. And so, <laughs> I've got to tell okay, it. Kim, okay, Kim, Could let's hear about the book. Confidence again. building does for you people. Let's, let's hear about the book again. Tell us about the book, where yes. it can be found. It could, all my books could be found on Amazon under Kim Backus, under my name, okay? There it is, I don't know if you can see it, I might get in the screen probably, there you go. Yep, 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 that's right. That's it. And I've also got my training this evening at 7 p.m., so please, um, you can find the link on Facebook or, um, yeah, I think it's just Facebook and LinkedIn, I think I've got all that, all the links. If not, email me, email it, me, um, Kim, Kim-Backus at dot <laughs> com. Info at Kim back Kim hyphen back. There it is. That's it's it. on the screen. Yeah. It's, on, it's the screen on the screen below you, Kim. There you go. There you it's go. on the screen below. <laughs> there you go. Email me, guys. Email me. I love receiving emails. Yes, you're, you're getting some comments here. Go, Kim, plug your book. Wow, go, Kim, plug your book. Promote your book. Amazing. Kim, I want to thank you for tuning in today. I want to thank you for connecting with us and sharing your story. It is so important for us to share our stories across the world. That's what brings change to people. And especially when you're passionate about what you do. And today we've seen the passion from you. But not it's just about passion. Change. It's about change. Yep. You've got your processes involved. You've got your products involved. You've got your books. You've got your courses. You are changing people's lives, changing women's lives, one person at a time. And if you join the program tonight, you'll be a whole group that'll be changed. So tune into Kim's program tonight. Go find, let me put her email address again and her details so you can find it. And Kim, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for, thank don't you disappear. for having me. 
thank you for having me. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening to me. Okay, so let's hear the final word from our sponsor today. You are listening to the Message Talk Show and Podcast. Do you believe you have something to share? Do you believe you have something to contribute? Do you have a story to tell the world, to share with your community? Gandhi said, man often becomes what he believes himself to be. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. So join us on the Message Talk Show and Podcast with host Alex Gordon. Right. Thank you. Thank you, folks, for listening to us today. Thank you for connecting with us. This is the message the message podcast, the message talk show, broadcasting every Thursday, 11 o'clock. And if you want to get your message out there, if you want to get your message out, just connect with me. We're on Facebook at the message talk show. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for connecting. Thank you for spending time with us. And I will see you again next week. The message talk show is back.